Hello everyone, on behalf of Anant Bajaj Retina Institute, LVPI Hyderabad, we present to you the technique of ultrasound biomicroscopy and its application through various clinical cases. Ultrasound biomicroscopy is a technique used to visualize the anterior segment with the help of high frequency ultrasound transducer, which has higher resolution but poorer penetration. The probe used in UBM has a frequency ranging from 30 to 50 megahertz, which gives it a resolution of 40 microns and depth of penetration of 4 mm. This video shows us the technique of performing ultrasound biomicroscopy. cornea is the first structure seen on UBM, we can see that the Bowman's membrane is seen as a first dense echo. The stroma shows low irregular reflectivity. The Desmet's membrane is seen as a dense highly reflective line. The corneoscleral junction can be differentiated because of the lower internal reflectivity of the cornea compared to the sclera. The anterior chamber is seen as an eco-free area between the cornea and the iris. Iris is seen as a flat uniform hyperecogenic area. In general, the iris profile is straight. The iris and ciliary body converge in the iris recess and insert into the scleral spur. This scleral spur is the most important landmark in the angle on UBM. The scleral spur is seen as a small ecogenic dot when the line between the sclera and ciliary body is traced to the AC. The ciliary body can be clearly defined by UBM from the ciliary processes to the pars plena. The area under the peripheral iris and above the ciliary processes is defined as the ciliary sulcus. The zonules are seen as a medium reflective line extending from the ciliary processes to the surface of the lens. UBM has quantitative as well as qualitative applications which we will discuss subsequently in this video. UBM can be used to measure size of various structures. It helps us in measuring the thickness of cornea and also finding the etiology for corneal edema. Anterior chamber depth can be measured from posterior surface of cornea to lens capsule. Normal anterior chamber depth is 2.5 to 3 mm. It gives us various quantitative measurement parameters for angle of the anterior chamber such as angle opening distance, AOD and trabecular ciliary process distance, TCPD. It can also be used to measure depth of posterior chamber and thickness of iris, ciliary body and sclera. However, it cannot determine thickness of lens as posterior capsule of the lens cannot be imaged on UBM. Now let's look at the qualitative applications of UBM and we begin with applications in cases of glaucoma. This patient presented to us with chief complaints of painful loss of vision in left eye. UBM showed AC was shallow with minimal iris to lens contact. Ciliary sulcus is open and there is no rotation of the ciliary body. Therefore, UBM helped us in confirming the diagnosis as primary acute angle closure attack by ruling out causes for secondary angle closure such as aqueous misdirection syndrome or swelling of ciliary body. This is a 42 year old female who had intraocular pressure of 22 millimeters of mercury post peripheral iridotomy. UBM showed that AC is not shallow and iris root is inserted anteriorly on the ciliary body, hence angles seem to be crowded. It also showed double hump sign of iris, hence confirming the diagnosis of plateau iris configuration. This patient presented to us with findings of microcystic corneal edema with intumescent cataract. UBM showed abnormally thickened cataractus lens causing anterior push on the iris, leading to shallow AC centrally and peripherally, thereby confirming the diagnosis of phacomorphic glaucoma. This patient presented to us with high intraocular pressure one month post cataract surgery. UBM helped us in diagnosing malignant glaucoma by showing intraocular lens to be pushed anteriorly due to anterior rotation of ciliary body, with forward push of iris lens diaphragm leading to shallow AC and angles to be closed. 
In this patient, UBM confirmed the diagnosis of pigment dispersion syndrome by showing deep anterior chamber with posterior bowing of iris. It helps us in assessing the extent of iridozonular and iridolenticular contact, thereby guiding us to ascertain the exact site for iridectomy. Let's talk about the applications of UBM in patients with uveitis. In patients with anterior uveitis, UBM helps us in finding the extent of peripheral anterior synechiae and posterior synechiae. This is very helpful in cases of anterior uveitis with complicated cataract along with small pupil. UBM is very helpful in diagnosing case of intermediate uveitis. It also tells us if the disease is active or inactive. Active intermediate uveitis will show low reflective dot echoes over the pars plana and ciliary body region suggestive of active exudates. UBM can also help us to find the cause for hypotony, such as in this case, where UBM confirmed the diagnosis of 360 degree ciliocoroidal detachment as indicated by white arrow. In patients with IOL induced uveitis, UBM can help us in locating the position of IOL. This is done by locating the position of haptic of IOL. Haptics not in the back are imaged peripherally in the region of ciliary sulcus. In the back haptics are seen medial to ciliary processes in close relation to irregularly reflective membranes formed by the zonules and capsule. This patient presented to us with injury to the left eye with cricket bat. He had intraocular pressure of 3 mm of mercury. UBM helped us in finding the cause for hypotony by diagnosing cyclodialysis cleft. We can see clear separation of the ciliary body from scleral spur which leads to creation of a direct connection between the anterior chamber and the supracoroidal space. UBM has clinical application in cases with tumors as well as cyst. It plays a very important role in ocular surface squamous neoplasia. It helps us in assessing the depth of the tumor, study the layer of origin of the tumor and planning the treatment. This patient presented to us with a mass in the temporal limbus in the right eye since three months. UVM clearly showed us that the lesion is involving conjunctiva and cornea and there is no intraocular extension present. UVM finds clinical importance in cases with cystic lesion of the iris. Cyst in the iris is seen as a round area in the iris with low internal ecogenicity on UVM. It can also help us in tracing the cyst track which is leading to cyst formation as seen in this case at 6 o'clock in limbus. This patient had a small localized elevated portion of the iris temporally. UBM showed a large cystic area with low internal ecogenicity in the ciliary body, giving us the diagnosis of ciliary body cyst. We can see that the ciliary body cyst is pushing iris anteriorly, resulting in localized shallowing of AC. UBM finds clinical importance in cases of scleritis as well as episcleritis. This patient presented to us with slowly progressive non-tender mass superior temporally near the limbus with increased redness in the left eye. UBM helped us in confirming the diagnosis as nodular episcleritis as it clearly showed the nodule involving only the episclera with heterogeneous internal reflectivity while sclera was spared. This patient presented to us with an inferior nodule at 5 o'clock at limbus with tortuous vessels and scleral thinning. UBM showed diffuse thickening involving the choroid and ciliary body along with internal heterogeneous reflectivity involving the sclera thereby diagnosing scleritis. Talking about few miscellaneous indications, assessing the vault in an implantable collamer lens post-operatively is very important and UBM helps us in assessing the same. It also helps us in assessing the post-operative centration of ICL. UBM tells us the location and type of foreign body based on the artifact seen. This case presented to us with history of ocular injury with stone particles. UBM helped us in identifying stone intraocular foreign body which showed shadowing artifact on UBM in the ankle of anterior chamber. This case presented to us with history of ocular injury with glass pieces in the right eye. UBM confirmed the presence of glass foreign body as it shows us to omit tail artifact. Despite being an instrument of huge importance, UBM is not free of limitations. It has penetration of 4 mm and it cannot measure structures beyond it. Also, it cannot be done in patients with open corneal or scleral wound as it is a contact investigation and it increases the risk of contamination. I would like to acknowledge following people for their contribution to this video. These are the references for our video. Thank you for your patient listening.